Welcome back to What Are Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the T-28 Concept, the Tier 7 American Premium Tank Destroyer. It's located on the southwest spawn of Glacier under the command of Apache 6467. Game on! Well, it's a Tier 7 game with Tier 5 tanks in it. And Apache hasn't sent us a replay for quite some time, but well, he's finally got around to it and he sent us a good one. Well, I don't know what that was fired at because it just hit the ground. He's got a 105mm gun which is capable of doing 320 alpha penetrating 181mm with standard ammo and with the premium rounds it'll go through 224. He probably won't need the premium rounds actually in this battle seeing as it's tier 7 but he might use them on some of the heavies. Well as you may know this was the tank, the prototype or one of the prototypes on the way to actually getting the T-28 heavy tank. Of course they had this one and they also had the T-28 prototype which was of course the turreted version. This one was rejected because well it did have some weak spots, the machine gun ports on either side. It uh, didn't have a full arc of fire, only 30 degrees either side of the center line. But I suppose the biggest problem was the fact that it did, um, it did have weak spots on it. And well, they thought of other other uh, designs which would be better. So the T28 prototype never got put into production. It was rejected. In fact, I don't think they ever built a prototype at all. It was um, rejected at the design stage. Now it does have fairly thick armor, but of course uh, the weak spots are fairly obvious. The machine gun ports and also. The lower plate of this uh, tank destroyer is fairly weak. You can get shells in through there if you've got enough pen. But don't try to penetrate anywhere else because it does have very thick armour. 203 millimetres. So it's pretty difficult even for a heavy tank to pen. Of course the easiest spot to pen is the rear and the sides. But best of all is those machine gun ports. Okay, we've got enemy tanks ahead. In fact, it's KV-3. And he's exchanging fire with the IS-3. Or the IS, rather, I should say. But he's already bounced around from a KV-1. He's not going go to be able to get through. Probably not even if he's got his 85mm gun. And he has. Okay, lower plate. Should easily... Oh, he's tracked the KV-3. Okay, now he can just penetrate the lower plate and... In fact, he's decided he's going to go through the drive plate instead. That just tracked him, though, so better he should go through the lower plate. That's it. Pick the right spot. Oh, now, what did he do there? I think he almost flipped that shell at the enemy. Didn't really aim it properly. That's better. He went for the, the weak spot along the centre, the driver's port area. Again, he tried to track it. This time round, he actually got hit in the gun. It's not crucial, though. Lower plate. Easy pen. And he got a high roll. One more. And it's a low roll this time. KV-1's not having much effect. In fact, he's now firing eight cheaters because he realises he just can't pen ordinarily. That round, easy pen again. Got a high roll. Yeah, firing HE is not going to do much, actually, Mr. KV-1. Best thing you can do is get into cover quick. Well, the KV-1, KV-3 tried to get a shot in through the side. Okay, we've got tanks coming this way, but he's dialing in on the T-34. Nope, didn't get it. Now he's starting to take fire from the KV-1. Well, it's still the HE. Ah, oh, that's better. 325, which is a high roll. Now he just needs to put that KV-1 out of his misery. Turn towards him. Oh, he's lost the driver. There you go. So, KV-1's down. There's a challenger over there. I'd stay behind the wreck of the KV-1. Oh, you don't need to. He's gone. Now, the KV-3's managed to get around. In fact, actually, he's killed the OI. Surprising. This is where the bad traverse of the uh, HTC can come into it. Oh, I say HTC, that's what it used to be known as. T28 concept now. 
just changed its name, that's Axel. So there's um, still a number of enemies out there, nine of them, and he did get hit by a Super Hellcat right in the weak spot. That guy obviously knows where to aim. He fires one back and gets 308, which is a low roll. Hellcat's not happy, so he's pulling back. That's better. One in the turret, but it's a low roll again. 315, the Hellcat's gone. Yep, they're bouncing rounds off him now because obviously they don't know where the weak spots are. Now, that's a little off to one side of where the M10 is. Actually, the shell went in the right direction, even though he was aiming in the wrong direction. He's still not moving forward. Yep, the KI is too showing you how it's done. <laughs> Just go. Super Hellcat, right up on top. Easy to get a shot on here. Yeah, high roll, 344. One more shot and he's out the game. But he knows that, so he's pulled back. One more shot, there you go, and he's gone. Now he's got 20% of the enemy hit pool now, which means potentially he's got the high calibre. Not necessarily though. Well, that's a blind shot. So, yeah, I just push forward. Don't, don't sit around, just keep going forward. He's more worried about the M10 RBFM, the SU-100 and the T-3485M to the south of him. Now, admittedly, the SU-100 with the 122mm gun is a formidable opponent, but the others, well, not really, because unless they're very accurate, and the T-34 is trying, but he's not getting pens. That was well aimed, but I think the T-34 ducked back into cover. Oh, and he gets hit. This time, it's by the RT. They've got an M-44 and an SU-122. I just go straight up and kill the RT actually. I think the IS-2 is going to do that for you. There's the SU-100 coming up and it looks like he does or did have the the 122mm uh, gun but he's now dead. The T-3485 although we can't see him he's still down there and the M-44 did get an accurate hit and in fact actually it just landed directly behind the machine gun ports which is why he got so much damage off that shot. That's better. He hit the T-34-85 for 338 with that one, which is a very high roll. It's a one-shot. I think he's going to try one more shot before he dies. Oh, he's side-scraping, and it failed. Okay, so there's only four enemies left. One RT, which is the SU-122A. They dealt with the, or rather the IS-2 dealt with the M44, and I suspect that the SU-122A is actually further south. So I don't think, oh, no he's not. The IS-2 is about to get a Pascucci's. You see, that's a very accurate shot by the M44, right on the rear of the vehicle. And we're now taking fire from the M10. And he fired a standard AP, but he got an accurate shot. And that's why, yep, he's aiming directly at the weak spots. You can see where it actually went in there. Very accurate shot. He's in the dip at the moment, which means he's fairly safe. But it's the M10 is a good shot, so... Let the uh, IS-2 catch up a bit. He's almost trying to goad the M10 RBFM into shooting at him.
I go ahead straight away now because although that M10 is probably aiming this way, one holding the rear, one holding the front, and the KV-1 between them, you might as well just go straight ahead. I wouldn't offer him the sides though, although he's an accurate shot, you're much better off driving directly towards the enemy rather than trying to go sideways because you're actually offering him the whole of the weak spot rather than half of the weak spot. He just doesn't want to go. The alternative is to drive around, go down where the Panther is and try and make your way up that way. The IS-2 will stop the M10 from coming up. Oh, and he's here. He's actually come back up. But of course, gun depression is a bit of a problem. Because the gun depression on this one is only 4.4 degrees. Okay, KV-1's on the path. The M10, well, they're still on the path as well at the back. Now just drive up because they're not going to be able to stop you. Just keep going. You could get a top gun if you can get all three of them. Yep, you see the M10 this time round is bouncing those rounds off him. Yep, not being able to get through. Finally fires an HE round because he gives up trying to fire armor piercing. Just drive straight at him. Oh, well, you're not going to get the top gun now because the M10's gone, or one of them has. Just drive straight towards the other ones. In fact, if I was you, I'd load the HE rounds because these HE will penetrate through 53mm of armor and they do 420 alpha. The enemy KV-1's dead. You'll easily penetrate the M10 RBFM with these 105mm rounds. So you do much more damage. The armor on the M10, remember, is very thin. It's only about the uh, to stop machine gun bullets. That's basically all it's designed to do. And the kill shot actually goes to the Yag Panther. battle stats and that was the first ace tanker for apache 6467 in the t28 concept yes we know it's a, a first ace tanker because he got the scrolls underneath the me you only get that the first time he got a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of your own vehicle a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in fact he ended up with seven a hand of god for surviving the battle hammer received damage from four different enemies or more um, he got a cool headed for blocking 10 or more ricochets, non-penetrating shots. A Spartan for blocking those shots or blocking at least one shot when you had less than 10% of his hit points left. A high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And yes, he got the steel wall as well for blocking the most damage in the game. And his win eight from that game was 9,394, which is very satisfactory. That's super unicum standard. Let's have a look at team score. Well, there he goes. Top of the table with when it comes to damage, 4,029. The next high scorer being the T3485M, the one that kept firing at him uh, from a distance without being spotted. He did 2,171 hit points, and the third highest damage was the Yagpat for on his own team, 1,850. The IS-2 managed to get a Pascucci's medal, because it could both RT, if you remember. When it came to kills, it was the IS-2 came on top because he got those kills. Five kills in total. Three kills went to Apache 6467. Actually, he's in third place because I missed out the fact that the T3485M got four kills out of that game. So he was their best player, I suppose you could say. And when it came to base XP, yep, he's Apache 6467's top of the table with 1,503. So uh, he's the only one over a thousand. The next closest being the IS-2 with 874. 743 actually went to the T-3485M and 742 went to the Dickmax. 
He fired 31 rounds in that game, 19 direct hits, 14 penetrations, damage of 4,029 hit points, of which 1,572 were at more than 300 metres. Yeah, kind of a mix of uh, fire at long range and short range, although I suppose he had to do the short range shots at the uh, heavy tanks that he came across. 46 hits received from the enemy, only three of which actually penetrated, and they were very accurate shots directly aimed at the weak spots, and it worked. Uh, 34 non-penetrations, 10 hits by way of splash, including that shot from the RT that actually landed just behind the weak spots as well. 5,060 hit points of damage blocked by army. He more than earned the, um, the, the steel wall, because obviously he only needed 11 uh, shots for that one. 46 is quite a big difference. One enemy vehicle spotted, six enemy vehicles damaged, three killed, 494 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 37,307 credits on a free-to-play account and after repair and ammunition resupply, um, very few premium rounds used, if any at all. I don't, I can't remember him loading premium. Um, so, or did he? I think he did actually. A few premium rounds right at the start of the encounter with the KV-3. 3,356 credits earned, profit. 1,503 base XP times 2 for the first victory, 200 for this being a premium vehicle, it's a reward tank for the second set of missions, you get 3,206 experience points altogether. So yes, first ace tanker, congratulations, he actually got TD8 for the T55A, the third uh, reward vehicle, uh, so obviously he's looking forward to getting that one when he gets it, and that's actually quite a good tank. Um, so he's well on the way to getting all of his missions. Uh, it won't be long before he gets his next reward tank. So well done. Uh, congratulations on the ace. And uh, if you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And um, please do remember that uh, we have a second channel called The General where you can watch great replays without any commentary on the videos at all. Thanks for watching.